Welcome to Actions and Limits. My name is Justin Atherton. I'm a personal coach and the founder of Confidence Unchained. With me as always is Paul Fortune. Paul is a business coach and the founder of A Call to Action. And together we make Actions and Limits. Welcome to the show, the podcast where we talk about the actions we can take and the limits we create. Hey, Paul, how's it going, man? It's going pretty well. Uh, I'm excited about this topic because I want to talk to you about a vacation that I'm going to be taking very soon. Yeah, we're going to touch on uh, work-life balance. Um, So vacation, that that sounds pretty fitting into that work-life balance. So yeah, uh, where are you going? I'm actually going to Boston. I've been to Boston probably about almost 10 years ago, and it's a great town. I mean, you feel welcome. The people there, they're very talkative people, uh, especially if you you don't have the same dialect as them. They're like, where are you from? Is that California? They're, they're all about your business. Uh, a lot of Irish traditions there, a lot of Irish songs they sing. Uh, a lot of American history with the Freedom Trail. I can't wait to do a little bit of uh, sightseeing with the Freedom Trail, going to the harbor. Uh, but I'm scared because, you know, I, I'm born and raised in Southern California. I am kind of a sissy when it comes to the snow. So I, I'm looking at the forecast, and it looks like there could be snow. So, uh, okay. you know, that, that's going to be something tough. Yeah, so you gotta you got to pack warm or – buy a jacket when you get there uh yeah i've never been yeah you never been no i've never been to boston you know i hear it's i hear it's a great town oh absolutely absolutely those east coast towns are are super cool um you know different vibe a lot you know they're way there's way more hustle and bustle when uh, when you go out to boston and new york it seems like everybody's in a hurry yeah yeah, I get that. Yeah, that that East Coast vibe. Everybody's moving fast, right? So, yeah. If you're not, if you're, if you're not moving fast, you better get out the way, and you better order fast too. I mean, I've been to places where uh, <laughs> I was ordering. Uh, I was in Philadelphia, and I was ordering a Philly cheesesteak, and the guy was like, "Come on already, order the damn thing!" I'm like, "Wow." <laughs> so, I, you know, before you get in line, know what you're ordering because you know they're gonna they're gonna call you out. No downtime. If you don't it's efficiency. Get oh, yeah. get the hell out of the way, you know, because we're moving as yeah. fast as we can. <laughs> they have no patience for people that don't know what they want. I, you know, they could none of those people could work at Disneyland I, like I did because there's no way they could survive. Because all I did was wait on people on what, what they ordered, and I had a smile and and oh, it's all good. I, I know. Want, the um, <laughs> can I get um? What do you what do you want, Sally? You want um. Uh, we want three yeah. of these. No, we need we need four. How many kids we got over? Here? We got you got six kids. Yeah, we're gonna need like seven. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can. Only... And then you're like, sorry, sir, we don't have hamburgers here. We do we do hot dog. <laughs> you're gonna have to go around the corner for that. We don't we don't have yeah, that. Yeah, so. waited in, a, in an hour long line to tell for me to tell you that we don't have hamburgers. Sorry, yeah, that's. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be excited to hear um, about your trip. Um, you going to see anything in particular? I know you said something about the Freedom Trail, but any, anything else that you're planning on checking out while you're out there? You know, I always like those. Uh, I don't know if you do them, Justin, but I always like those duck boat tours. The, the you know the the bus that goes from land to sea, um, kind of a cool little deal. Um, so you know, I want to try that because there's a lot of. Uh, uh, riverways in um, in the Boston area where Harvard is and MIT and okay. um, there's a lot of universities out that way so um, I'm gonna check that out um, you know maybe maybe catch a game you know maybe if the Patriots are in town or the Celtics or whoever sure um, maybe catch a game there uh, but uh, gonna eat some chata chata I think that's how they say it chata <laughs> <laughs> please. Please don't say that while you're out there. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I don't want to offend. The, I don't want to offend the, the names there. You know, 
I'm definitely, you know, give them respect. But it's, it's funny. They, they, they have their uh, dialect, um, sure. uh, how they say this. And, and, you know, it's kind of fun to go to different um, parts of the United States and hear the, the, the different dialects. Because we, uh, well, I, you know, I know you're in Texas, Justin, but I have a, a California dialect. I, you know, I, I might eat dude or, you know, man or gnarly or radical and yeah. stuff that, you know, maybe the people in Texas might not, might not say. Yeah. Yeah. I think I confuse people a little bit because they, they're, they're pretty sure I'm not from out here. Um, but they can't place it. I've gotten all over the place, like Nebraska, Wisconsin, which confuses me. Cause I know I don't sound like I'm from up North. Um, so I just, I just let people guess. It's like a, it's a fun game for people to try to figure out where my accent's from. So, um, but yeah, I, yeah, I think that'll be fun. I've never heard of those duck boat tours, but uh, uh, again, uh, uh, I'll be excited to hear about your trip. And, and I know I'm going to have to make it out to the Northeast uh, one of these times. Uh, maybe that'll be a, one of our next vacations somewhere up there. Absolutely. I think, yeah, isn't your dad from uh, the Maryland area? That's uh, East Coast. Yeah, yeah. He was born out there in, in Baltimore. Um, so he, I know he, he spent a good a portion of his, uh, childhood out there in that area, DC type area. So, um, which is not far from, you know, New York and Boston. I mean, it's probably a four or five hour, uh, uh, road trip and probably a two hour plane ride. Sure. Yeah. You can go through like about seven States in like five hours out there on the East coast. You know, you drive for six hours in Texas and you're only about halfway through the state. So it's a, it's a whole you different. Know, I bet, speaking of Washington DC area, you're so true on that. Sometimes you don't even know what state you're in. Like one minute when I was in Virginia, I'm like, what? I'm in Virginia. And you know, now you're in Maryland and it's just, it's how, how, <laughs> how every how close everything is and there's not really a sign that says welcome to blah 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 you're just you're just all of a sudden there yeah it's probably some of those roads that go in and out of the different states where it's like it is no point putting up a sign when you're going to cross state lines about seven times in the next 10 minutes so that doesn't really happen in the middle of the the u.s or on the on the west coast really you know the states get a little bit bigger and more spread out so um absolutely but yeah. So real quick, before we get into our uh, topic for today, let's uh, recognize our sponsor again for today, uh, Frontline Standard. Uh, Frontline Standard is a veteran and law enforcement owned patriotic uh, apparel company, uh, and they're based out of Texas. And with every product purchased from Frontline Standard, they donate a portion of their profits to a nonprofit organization that supports American heroes and their families. Frontline Standards is run by a former U.S. Marine uh, who now works as a police officer. Uh, he runs the company with his wife, and they wanted a way to give back to those who sacrifice so much on a daily basis. Uh, the mission of Frontline Standards is to provide Americans with quality, patriotic wear that brings awareness to and supports those who were and are currently on the front line. And Frontline Standards supports the military, they support the first responders, and they want all of us to look good while we do it as well. Now, if you go on their website, FrontlineStandardApparel.com, you can use our discount code, which is ACTIONS20, and you will get 20% off your entire order. So, again, thank you, Frontline Standard. So, Paul, let's, let's dive into this. We're, we're talking about work-life balance. Um, I think it was a good segue talking about your vacation because, you know, that's an important part to have that time off to – either spend with friends or family or just just away from the job so what are your thoughts Absolutely. on that um i, I want to tell you i want to be uh 100 honest with you justin on this this is a topic I, I struggle with um i've been in uh sales realm all my you know adult career and a lot of times it's commission based hmm. and so I struggle sometimes with taking vacations, although I am taking a vacation coming up, uh, because of the fact that uh, I'm not there to answer the phone or, or pick up the cell or what have you. And then when I'm on that vacation, um, I'm not fully present because I'm thinking about, you know, what money I could be losing because I'm, you know, not at my office 
making the phone calls or being able to pick up the phone or, or, or get, you know, get the ball rolling. Sure. So I, as a person need to, uh, you know, not have those fears or, or that anxiety. Cause I love to travel. I love to have a good time and I love to in- indulge myself in, in the surroundings and forget about what's going on at home and, and being present with what I'm doing at the time, because that's part of, um, you know, recharging the battery. If, if you're not doing that, you come back from vacation, you really didn't recharge the battery. Sure. You know, people who more immerse themselves in the uh, the culture or wherever they're at and just live in the moment, they're recharging their battery. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And, and that's, it's got to be more tough when you work in a type of career where you are responding to clients and you know maybe there's a deal that could have been had and you missed the, the phone call and you know maybe it's something to where it's like it's okay right like if mm-hmm. if you missed that one call and you know maybe a deal didn't go through it's like instead of kicking yourself going like man i should have been at work you know realizing hey look i need this i need this time off either with my family or just like like you said to recharge my batteries and and realize that maybe that's just maybe that's a price that you pay for it right um Mm -hmm. i know that early on in in my career i was i was so attached to the idea of or really it was more identifying with my job and so working overtime you know staying late I spent I spent so much time at work and even when I was off you know you know talking about uh, the job and different things that happened and um, it's a it's a big thing with police officers that they really suggest that you have friends that are outside of that type of career because what happens is you hang out on your time off and you talk about work and I think that that that's something that can apply to um, a lot of different careers if you just hang out with coworkers, and what are you going to talk about when you're you know at the bar you know or at a restaurant or doing something oh man did you hear what so-and-so said and oh man this account fell through and so, so you're, it's constantly on your mind and you can't even enjoy each other's company without talking about work. Yeah. Your anxiety levels go up as well. When you're, in, when you're outside of work, you know, you're at a happy hour or a restaurant, whatever you're doing with your coworkers, a lot of times it becomes, uh, negative, uh, quite frankly, sure. you start talking about uh, negative, uh, things that happen at work, uh, you know, Rarely, I mean, you know, I, I'm guilty of this. I've had many happy hours or hangouts with coworkers outside of work. And, and, and a lot of it, when it comes to talking about work, we don't always talk about work, but work definitely comes up. Like you said, I mean, mm-hmm. we share, we share this. So, but when work does come up, uh, generally it comes up in a negative fashion yeah. and it definitely raises your anxiety when you're, when you're discussing it. So, you know, it's good to, 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 you know, hang out with your coworkers, um, though, uh, and, and, and know them on a personal level. Uh, so you kind of can, you know, when you're at work and, you know, a high stress situation comes about, you can understand where they're coming from because you know their background a little bit. Sure. Or, or you know what their strengths and weaknesses are because of, you know, dealing with them outside of work. So it's good to hang out with you know, coworkers outside of work, if you can, if, if, if it's available for you to do so. Uh, yeah, not I, I, don't- I think the idea is just, you know, if you do have an extended group of friends, you know, have some people that work in different areas. So one, you're expanding your own knowledge of, of different aspects and different things. And also you're not spending your whole free time just talking about your job. You know, I'm not saying you don't, you, you can't have friends or be friends with the people you work with, but expand your horizons and hang out with more people than just, you know, the people that you hang out with eight hours a day, 12 hours a day. And then, Oh, now let's hang out some more and talk about the same stuff and complain about the same things. 
So it's it becomes very difficult to detach from that and like you said be present in the moment with your with, with your your family, your kids and that people have a hard time, you know, putting their phone down, not answering emails when you're off. Um, like I, I said early on, I, I had that trouble disconnecting, and um, later on in my career, I realized like how detrimental that was to my, you know, mental and emotional health. Because um, it was did like, you have a moment, or did you have a moment, or was this gradual? Or no, did, it, did there something... wasn't any like moment I would say that stood out. It was just realizing that my time off is very important. So like when I have a day off, I'm not checking my email. I'm not, you know, checking up on, on what's going on. Like it doesn't like, that's not the important part. Like if I'm hanging out with my daughter, like that's what's important. You know, I like to look at it in whatever I'm doing, whether I'm at work or I'm off. If I can focus in like, what is my purpose right now? I really like, I ask myself that question like on a regular basis, sometimes mul multiple times a day. If I'm in the middle of, of doing something and I start getting distracted, you know, I'm like, hang on, what is my purpose right now? And I it, sometimes... Yeah, a certain exercise that you do to, to help you with that, um, to keep you present? Is there, so, sometimes or just... So. Yeah, sometimes it's just that question. You mm -hmm. know, like say I'm... I'm you know, hanging out w with my daughter and, you know, I, I realize I'm getting distracted either thinking about work or the business or so something else. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I'm not working on any of that right now. What is my purpose right now? My purpose is to have a conversation with my daughter and communicate with her and play with her. And it, and it brings me back to that moment so I can keep that work-life balance. Because you can be in the middle, like you said, you can be in the middle of your vacation, but not there not present and so is that really keeping that balance if your if your brain is at work still while your body's in boston <laughs> no, that the, the, you're not that the, the you're losing the balance sure and uh, and that's something i gotta be honest with you justin i have to work on yeah. uh, extremely because uh you know and like you justin i know you do too is we take pride in our our jobs and what we're doing and, and everything like that we want everything to be done a certain way so you know we we you know we stress about it we want to make sure that you know it's done how we want it to be done mm -hmm. and um, when you're not there to you know oversee some things you start thinking about it oh is everything going okay while i'm not there you know and um but like you said in the scheme of things, uh, you're, you're probably not losing much at all. Sure. You know, I think your mind is telling you you are, but if you really break it down, you're really not. And um, and it's just, I just have to, like you said, you 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 tell yourself a question or give yourself a question. Am I, you know, get, bring myself back, bring myself back. And um, I, I definitely need to work on that myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Do, do stay present and 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 really enjoy the vacations because you know you know we don't always get a lot of vacations you know we're in in the United States I mean I know in Europe and everything like that they take you know sometimes they take six weeks off uh, a year and all right that's that would be great if I took six weeks off you know especially if I could take like two or three weeks off in a row I definitely think I could live in the present sure because I would kind of kind of forget you know, what's going on at work, it can slowly fade away. But when you take a, a vacation that lasts four or five days, you know, the, the, the old saying is you, you take, it takes you two to, to stop thinking about work. And then the, and then the two, and then when you have the last two days, you start thinking about work again. So mm. that you only have that period where you're really, you know, not thinking about work at all. Got so it. yeah, if I on our vacation, um, I think that would solve a lot of my problems. Well, then but maybe I, that's. What I think about it on the other end. When I have a vacation coming up, like the last two days before I'm going on vacation, that's all I'm thinking about is, like I I'm getting ready to leave. I need to pack. I need to get this done, and I'm at work not being productive, or mm -hmm. you know. So it it happens on both sides, right? Um, I I've actually been doing some interviews recently. Um, 
I'm, I'm writing an article. I've been talking to some different business owners and entrepreneurs, and and some of this the idea of the work life balance has come up to where kind of what you talked about the idea of like relinquishing that control, like they're scared to take a vacation or take a day off, like a day off. I've talked to these business owners that are afraid to walk away from the business for a day because they they fear that it's going to fall apart. And so they can't like detach and they know like rationally they're like, I know the business isn't going to fall apart in, in a day, but that's underlying fear sitting there going like, man, like I need to control every aspect of what's happening or what's not happening. And, you know, you have to convince yourself, hey, it's fine. Trust your team. Trust in the people that you put in place, you know, for a reason and stop micromanaging and allow yourself the ability to step away rather than, you know, clutching on to everything and having to make every single decision that's made throughout that process. And uh, another big thing that I've heard from from several people that I interviewed was, you know, what's what's one thing you want to work on in your personal life? And it's always been, I need to spend more time with my family, or I wish I had been spending more time with my family for the last several years, you know, as I was building my business, I was coming up, you know, realizing that you're neglecting a certain part of your life. And so, you know, 10 years down the road, your kids are grown up and you haven't really spent much time with them or your maybe your spouse is being neglected. So all of those things fall into that work-life balance, right? Yeah, I mean, the two greatest commodities you have is, is time and health. And, you know, we don't know how long we're going to have either one of them. Um, and yeah, I've talked to people uh, who are retired now and and we're, you know, killing it on the business side. And um, a lot of them say, you know what, it really didn't matter. You know, it was my family and my friends that mattered. I mean, I, I'm, it was great. I made a, made a great living and I would have made a great living, you know, pulling off the pedal a little bit. My income wouldn't have been that much different, wouldn't have changed my lifestyle at all. Yeah. But I, I, I just couldn't, you know, you have that. You know, a lot of these these guys have, you know, they're the reason why they're successful. They have that a personality that, you know, they just go, 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 go. And, you know, there's no no stop. And that's probably why they are successful. But uh, in the scheme of things, you, you definitely have to look at the full picture. Um, if you do have a family, you know, you know, you have you know, your, your kids. Uh, you you want to see, a, you know, them play football, baseball, ballet, dance, you know, whatever they, they do. You know, on you know, for their extra activities, you want to be around there to see them do that. And you know, I, I think of that song, "The Cats in the Cradle." I think that song is so prevalent mm -hmm. because you, if you treat your kids, you know, and they're in the, in your life that they're, you know, they're your number one priority. Whatever you know, whatever you need, you know, we're 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 a unit. We're, we help each other out. When you're when they're older they're going to reciprocate that. They saw how you were. They're going to reciprocate that to their kids, and they're going to reciprocate that back to you, maybe when you're a little bit older and you're a little bit slower and, and, and you may need a little bit of care from them. They're going to be a little bit more patient with you because you were patient with them when they were, when they were, when they were smaller. But if you are not around and then you get older and all of a sudden, okay, I'm ready, and now I don't have a job anymore, and now I want to hang out with you, let's hang out. And, you know, you can't be upset with your kids to say, Dad, well, where were you, yeah. you know, for the last years? You know, you were never around. Now you don't have a job anymore. You're retired. You have all this time. You want to hang out with me. Well, that's great. Well, I got my job now. I got my career going. I don't have time. But I bet you if they made time when they were younger, you know, and then when you retired, they'd make time for you now when you, uh, when they have a, when they're doing their career. Sure. Because you're, you're instilling values and priorities and your kids and the, I think the big issue that that we deal with is in our society we value what we call success or money or work over family and um, communication and relationships so it we need to have some kind of shift and just realize 
what's really important. Because like you said, the people you've talked to that are retired, they're like, man, if I would have just took my foot off the pedal, sure, I would have made, you know, a little bit less money. But guess what? I would have been happier. And we've touched on this before that, you know, success doesn't look the same for everybody. You have to figure out what makes you happy. And that should be in the equation of success, right? You know, if your idea of success is being able to, you know, take a six week vacation every year or, you know, if it's a certain money amount or family, like it needs to be part of the equation because money doesn't make you happy. And we, we create this false idea that working as hard as you can will get you respect from your family and your kids when really all they want is your time. And if you're not giving that to them, then like you said, down the road when your kids grow up and they're like, oh, well, it's more important to work than to spend time with my family. And so, like you said, and like the song um, Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin, you know, when the kid grows up after his dad had been shutting him down, oh, I don't, I don't have time to play with you. I'm working. Well, now when the dad's retired and older... He's like, hey, son, you want to hang out? No, dad, I got to work. I got to deal with the kids. I got this. Like, these are what's important. Don't you remember? That's what you taught me, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Well, uh, on the the lines of vacations, uh, Justin, is there a vacation that stands out in your mind that uh, that you're proud of or had a good time on? Wow. I mean, I've I've had several vacations this past year. I don't know if one stands out over the other. I um, went to Vegas, went to New Orleans, um, been to California a few times. Um, I have to say, man, I, I I really just think it's my mindset. You know, over the past you know few years has changed to where it's like shut everything else out. You know. Again, that whole idea is like, what is my purpose right now? My purpose is to enjoy myself, enjoy the people that I'm with, and have a good time, have fun, be happy, you know, because they're a little, they're different, um, and just enjoy it, experience different things, you know, um, talk to as many people as I can, absorb the culture, the different area that you go to. I think that's the point, right? Um, so I, I yeah, can't absolutely. say if one stands out over the other. I have one that stands out uh, to me. And the reason why it stands out to me, it's g- generally not a vacation that I like to go on. But um, I went on it, and it was, I got to tell you, it was very, very, very enjoyable. Uh, I went to uh, Yellowstone in uh, Wyoming okay. uh, a couple of years back. And not the camping type or the trail guy or, or any of that nature. So I was going into it kind of with a negative mindset on it because I'm like, ah, I really don't want to, you know, do this. But it was a good friend of mine who was getting married. And I said, you know what, uh, for them, I, w- I want to go to the wedding. Sure. And um, we, we went out uh, a week early and um, I was out of my comfort zone and I was going on these, these, hikes that I would, I, I, you know, like the beginning of the hike, I wanted to say, oh, I'm going to die. I mean, ten, you know, nine, <laughs> 10 mile hike. I'm thinking, what is this? And the switchbacks uphill. I mean, yeah. you know, they weren't just, you know, you know, flat uh, trails we were going on. Um, but, you know, I saw I mean, great waterfalls. We saw some great animals, deer, elk, animals I normally, norm, normally don't see. And, and just seeing the, the you know, the great sunsets and the different colors and the different smells. And I have to tell you, when I came back from uh, that vacation, I have never been more refreshed in my life. I came back Hmm. that, you know, Monday or Tuesday, whenever I came back, and I just felt like a million bucks. I And I have to thank, uh, I'm going to throw it out there, I have to thank Aaron and Chuck. Um, They they really got me out of my comfort zone and, and, uh, and, and showed me a great vacation. So, if I have to give a vacation that stands out of my mind, that was the one. Yeah. Well, that, that's pretty awesome. And, and they say, you know, spending a lot of time in nature definitely helps you uh, recharge and 
Um, you know, there's some different thoughts about, you know, being out there and that, like detoxing your body from all the, the smog and the stuff that we're breathing in and maybe drinking better water. So you're, you're putting yourself in a better place. You know, the, the, um, there's a lots of different ideas about being out in, in nature, but, um, they definitely say that it can lead to recharging your batteries a lot better. So it sounds like an amazing, amazing trip. So. I recommend it, and yeah, if you take your daughter there, I, I think you guys both would love love the uh, the the area, the park. It's beautiful. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, one one thing I wanted to touch on, and this was like an idea I've I've had conversations with other people about about balance. So there's some people that talk about balance, like you should have or strive for complete balance at any moment in your life like everything should be in perfect balance like that's like that's the goal now i'll give you my insight into that i i feel that that's unrealistic to me you should look at your um, long-term balance maybe we'll call it medium-term balance like maybe over a year's time have some pretty good balance because maybe there's sometimes that you are going to work more than others and maybe you you work more leading up to a vacation to get yourself some extra money for that or to be able to spend time with the family so to me it seems like the balance goes back and forth and is never in complete balance so to me it seems unrealistic to strive for complete balance at any one moment of your life what do you what do you think i 100 percent agree with that i think that's ridiculous and there's some things that aren't as important to you that are important to you so why should you say oh you know maybe maybe some people you know put it in a wheel of spirituality but maybe that's not important to some people Mm -hmm. but because you want to be balanced you want to be more spiritual no i mean you you do the things that you feel will make you best best well-rounded best balanced um and you do your best on it and uh, you know like you said sometimes you know you have your short-term stuff that needs to be done like oh you know what i got to get this project done i'm I'm, my balance is going to change because i have to get this project done Mm -hmm. but then when i get this done then i can you know spend that extra day maybe i'll take another day off and spend it with the kids or the family um yeah there's no way you're going to have uh, uh, balance every single day of your life and that's you know and that would stress me out even thinking about that like oh <laughs> like oh I don't have my balance I mean you know I, I don't need another thing to worry about in my life and that's definitely not something I want to put in my head it's like okay every day I need to spend two hours on this two hours on this project yeah. you know and the, yeah it I, I've heard people talk about that and it just seems very unrealistic. And, and even if you're leaving out all this other ideas of, of what people think should be in your balance wheel, if you just took like five things that were important to you in one day, you would be very hard pressed to evenly match the time across the, the hours that you're awake. You know, it was it would be very difficult. So, I think looking out at different time frames, whether it's you know maybe maybe a week is even pushing it. You know, is your balance? You know, that could be an issue there, unless you're focused on like, hey, you know, every Friday night's date night with the spouse. You know, and then it's like, hey, we're gonna spend the weekend doing something with the kids or whatever your time frame is. Like, if you have something like that balanced out, but but like you said, projects at work are going to come up or do new contracts are going to come up. It's like, hey, I got to put in some extra hours. Um, or maybe you're leading up to that vacation. You're like, well, let me work some extra time so I can spend a little bit of extra money on that vacation the way I want to. So, yeah, I, I've heard people say that. And, and my reply has always been that, that that's unrealistic, that you should look over a longer period of time to equate that balance. Not too long. You don't want to look at 60 years balance. I'm going to work hard for 40 years so I can enjoy the last 20 years of my life. You know, I don't think that you want to look that long. 
Well, I, I think it's important to, you know, maybe um, schedule out, you know, your week or your, your month. And, 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 you know, like you said, projects come up and things change. But if you can kind of schedule something so that, you you know, because a lot of people, relationships with their spouse is important. And and, and I, I think that definitely is. And I think uh, a good date night once a week is actually a great thing, mm -hmm. you know, where you're just kind of enjoying each other, you know, especially if you have children. Um, the date night is, is, is very important because you want to, uh, you know, keep your relationship strong because eventually, you know, a lot of people live, you know, through their kids and then when their kids leave, they're like, oh no, well, what, you know, the last 25 years of my life was through my kids and now I'm with you and yeah, I, I can't remember. I, I don't really know who you are and <laughs> you're probably different. You know, your whole personality is probably different than it was 25 years earlier. So sure. um, I think it's very important to uh, keep a good uh, relationship with your spouse and your kids. If you have multiple kids, if you can, I know this is realistic to do it every week, but if you could take your kid, your one kid for an hour, just to have some one-on-one -on -one time with them so they, they feel important that, mm. you know, they have dad and dad and daughter, dad and son time or mom and son mom and daughter time yeah um if you could visualize it a little bit and then do it as a group i i think all of that is good stuff yeah definitely um i think and uh, you even mentioned it in there but trying to do all that in one like one week even saying like i'm gonna be all balanced out like i'm gonna make sure to have that one hour with this kid and then the other kid to get another and then we're gonna do the group time like that you're starting to get like, man, I am cramming my schedule full of stuff. Like I'm, I'm micromanaging myself through my week. Well, so I, I think, think but, but you know what I mean? Like sure. It, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, Pushing it out a little bit farther. Like if you can manage all that in a month, great. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. but, but thinking if all, all at any one point and then say something happens on Friday date night, you know, you get a flat tire and then, it gets canceled. You got to deal with something else, and then oh, my balance is all off for the week. I'm just thrown out of whack. I can't handle it. I gotta yeah. go in my little corner and. <laughs> and you gotta practice the growth mindset, right? Yeah, you know that's uh, <laughs> like we talked about before. Yeah, definitely, it, it it it's a factor, you know. So, but you, know, the work life balance is important. There's a lot of people out there, especially business owners and entrepreneurs, that don't make it important. And I think a lot of that comes into your own self care. You know, you don't have to be in the gym, you know, every day, but if you can do stuff to take care of yourself and not feel guilty for taking care of yourself, like whatever it is you need to do, whether it's eating better or just moving your body. Whatever that means. If, if you want to do yoga or swim or Pilates or rock climbing, do something. Something to keep yourself functioning. And it's okay to be selfish. And maybe that's a, another topic that we talk about another time. The whole idea of selfishness in our society is negative when all it really means is caring for yourself first. Yeah, um, and want to add to that. Another thing that uh, you want to uh, work on with that is diet. Diet is huge, yeah. especially if you don't have time to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Diet, you know, can make or break you. You know, you can go to the gym a lot, and you still get big and fat if you're not eating correctly. So, yeah. uh, or are you have the energy if you eat poorly and you're an entrepreneur and you eat, you know, fast foods and greasy foods, you know, in the middle of the day. Your productivity is going to go down, so sure. you know a, a balanced diet uh, will definitely help you uh, to withstand uh, higher uh, levels of energy. Yeah, and and that all falls under the self care, and and again, maybe that's a whole that that's a whole topic on itself. Self care that we can come up with later on down the road. Sure. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I really enjoyed the topic. Actually, I, I learned a lot from talking to you, Justin. So I, I thank you. Um, or giving your input because uh, that will help me when I go to Boston. Yeah, on yeah. what I need to do to uh, live in the moment and not worry about what's going on in work. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Try that. Ask yourself when you find yourself being distracted. What is my purpose right now? It's a simple question. Try it. My purpose is to throw tea off off the harbor. 
do it do it i want to hear that story so <laughs> i'm excited um you i have a question, I have a question uh that uh that, that came in and like to uh like to read it sure yeah for ask paul anything yeah let's go um, okay so it was uh guinevere from rhode island providence rhode island a lot of, we have a good uh, mix over at providence rhode island yeah, the, guinevere. The, the northeast that's where you're headed up over there maybe you need to stop over there in rhode island while you're at it he said hey paul uh with health not being an issue if you could eat one fast food place Every single day, what place would it be? Oh, I have my guess what it would be for you, but um, I might be wrong. I think you might be right. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to answer this question and I'm going to go more commercial because, you know, we have a broad uh, audience from different states. So I don't want to say something local that only people in Southern California know. So I'm going to say something, uh, uh, a more of a commercialized fast food place that I absolutely love, 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 and that place is Taco Bell. Okay, that w that wasn't my guess, but now, like in hindsight, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe that was that should have been the choice. So I could eat those regular tacos every single day. <laughs> I, I I could have a regular taco every single day. And eat that the rest of my life. I, I don't do it because I don't, you know, I obviously want to be somewhat healthy, but I could, <laughs> I could probably, you know, uh, you know, three or four tacos at a sitting every single day and, and, and be uh, content if yeah. there was no health. Issue. You're right. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I like tacos, you know, and I know when we were younger, we ate Taco Bell quite a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> But I can't remember the last time I've eaten Taco Bell. But um, I'm definitely up for the whole taco diet. Um, I'm on par with that. But yeah, Taco yeah. Bell. Yeah, I I could see that. I could definitely I could definitely see that. So so Guinevere, thank you for the question. <laughs> well, I'm just curious. What was your guess? You said I, that you had. You, you know, had I was thinking In and Out. I can't, I hate In and Out. Oh man! So maybe I was just thinking about myself. <laughs> I, you know, I, I can, you know, if you you love In and Out, I get it. I, I I know I'm in the minority. I know that everybody loves In and Out. Not in but Texas. I, I hate that. That was a little extreme. It, but I I don't I don't enjoy it. it uh, it's I, rough. For whatever reason I don't. I know that In and Out is huge, especially where I'm at. Everybody loves In and Out. Yeah. And when I say I don't like In and Out, I'm like shunned. They're like, Are you kidding me? Do you not have taste buds? So uh, I'm used to the the uh, the bad pushback, but to yeah, in say Texas, it, there's a battle between you know you know people that like In and Out because they just started coming to Texas, but there's another burger chain, Whataburger, that all the the Texans are like, no, In and Out is crap. You got to eat Whataburger. So I'm sure everyone in their own area is going to have you know that one idea about um, what what their fast food pick. But uh, I like the question so. Uh, it was a good show, Paul. Um, I'm glad it, it kind of opened up some other avenues for some different topics, you know, on self care or selfishness. So I think, um, uh, uh, in general, it was, it was a really good topic to discuss. Well, let's just end it right there for Justin Atherton. This is Paul Fortune. We'll see you next week. All right. See you next Monday. Thank you for listening to the show. Remember to leave a comment and tell us what you thought about today's episode. Follow us on your favorite podcast platforms. We're on Apple, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and featured on Podbean. Follow us on Instagram at Actions and Limits and stay updated on all the upcoming content. If you have any outrageous questions for our section, Ask Paul Anything, submit them to actionsandlimits at gmail.com and your question could be featured on the show.